Manu, if I can get you in, and like I said in the beginning, you know, you, we, we know you as a celebrated author, but uh, I think a lot of people forget or may not even know or may not even remember that you actually worked uh, there. We pulled out a couple of old pictures in Mr. Tharoor's uh, office as a younger avatar of yourself. Um, and now, of course, you've gone full time into literature. So you speak today not as a politician, not as a man with any political affiliations, but as somebody who has known uh, Shashi personally, uh, who has seen perhaps the figure behind uh, the persona. Do you want to talk a little bit about what might have driven him uh, to take this position? We haven't seen too many people in the party ready to do this. The last set of people who did this were Rajesh Pilot um, and Jitinder Prasad. Go ahead, Manu. You know, I think uh, as you hinted earlier, he's won three elections. And even though Trivandrum is the capital of Kerala, this really is predominantly a rural seat. You know, there's lots of villages. His votes are, you know, I think in the 2014 election, it was a very close election. But the final sort of votes trickled in from the fishing villages on the coast. And that's how he ended up winning. Uh, he started the All India Professionals Congress a few years ago. And as part of that, he ends up traveling to different parts of North India as well. And I've seen his Hindi improve over the years. And because that's happened, even though he goes for a Professionals Congress event, other units of the Congress actually invite him for events. Now, the thing is, because he's not a cabinet minister or he, you know, he's not one of the big uh, leadership members of the Congress at the moment, maybe the press doesn't cover these things uh, as they ought to, but there is a kind of engagement with it. I remember a, a time he went to Gwalior. This, I, I worked for him last five years ago, but he went to Gwalior and he was actually invited to campaign during an election there because people thought he'd be able to pull in people. So I think there is, you know, we see on social media a certain kind of polished anglicized, you know, sort of globalized figure. But the same figures capable of wearing a munda, going into Trivandrum, kissing babies, attending weddings, going to funerals, talking to people, getting those votes. The second election for which I was a part was a very tough election, but he managed to sail through. And 2019, also people weren't sure. You know, there was this feeling that, oh, will he win? Won't he win? But ultimately he did. And he recovered his earlier margin. His first election, I think he had close to 100,000 votes in his margin. Second election was about 15,000. And the third election was again back to about 100,000 in what is predominantly a rural uh, constituency. So when we say grassroots, I think he's capable of touching the grassroots. It's just that maybe it's not in the Hindi belt in the north. And that matters, I suppose. But all the same, it's not fair to say there's no grassroots uh, aspect to him. He's capable of bridging those things. The other thing I would say is that there's also a deep sense of idealism. There's a deep sense of engagement with the Congress's history. And if you look at all his books, he's not hesitated to critique the Congress and its own internal blunders. There's a whole range of books written over 20, 30 years, and even in the recent past. The press often says he puts his foot in his mouth when he praises the prime minister and so on. But he's not against going against the party line when it comes to principle. And I think that comes from a deep conviction in, in that certain beliefs are worth fighting for. So even if you know winning is not the... the is I mean, people will argue that winning is not in the in the sight of the moment, given the way the things given the way things look. Mm -hmm. He will still fight the fight because I think the fight itself is worth fighting. It was the okay. same in earlier times in his life as well. Even in the UN and so on, people said you might lose, but you still choose to fight. Manu, uh, you know, on this idea of being, you know, you've already addressed the thing about grassroots versus urbane. Uh, but, you know, Shashi has also in recent years written about why I'm a Hindu. Uh, he has taken bits of... Uh, 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 you know, sort of, of of contemporary politics and welded them with literature, with philosophy and made the argument. And I remember he, he said to me, I am more Hindu than the BJP. We can get into a kind of minefield there, but I want you to bring your perspective of Dr. Tharoor. Who is he? Because what we see uh, is this is this sort of very clever uh, wordsmith, right? Uh, that's is effectively what we see, who has a certain sort of, uh, you know, set of issues that he cares strongly about. But who is he the man? Who is Shashi the man? And is he floating as much as you know, a test balloon here? Or will he, as he did at the UN, ride through on principle and, and fight this fight, even though it may be preordained to lose? I think he's a fighter in that sense. You know, there, there's no question of fighting just for the sake of it, for to make a show. He'll give it his best. He'll, he'll rally together a team. He'll try and get the message out. And that's just the way he is. Whatever comes before him, he's a very competitive person and a very hardworking person. You know, I, it was my first job working with him. And I remember I was working on my first book then. It took me six years. And one of the reasons I was motivated was I would sit in the office and watch his study light on till two in the morning. And this was after a full day of parliament because he'd be working on his book. And this was after he'd written a dozen 
thousand books. This was after he'd been minister, after he'd been under secretary general at the UN. So there is a commitment to work, there is an appetite for work, and there is an energy to that he brings to the table. That's one thing. On the Hindu thing, I think what's happened is that because this the conversations increased in recent years about wearing your Hinduness on your sleeve, there's obviously going to be a response to that. But he isn't putting up a show there either. We in the office always had a joke about the number of Ganapatis he has in his house. If you've been to his house, Barkha, you would have seen in his dining room a giant Ganapati that his mother painted. His yes. office is full of Ganapatis. When people broke into the office, he actually counted how many Ganapatis had gone missing. There's a whole desk there full of Ganapatis. So that's his Ishta Devata, as it were. And he never leaves the house without doing his prayers early in the morning. Now, this wasn't demonstrated in public. If you went to the Padmanabha Swami temple in Trivandrum, there weren't photographs taken like that earlier. Now, of course, there's greater consciousness about it because people are talking about it. And there is a kind of mood where you where perhaps you don't need to hide your religious uh, feelings. And for him, I think the idea also is that given that there's a kind of perversion uh, of that religious identity on one side of the political divide. He feels that by wearing his religion on his sleeve, by saying that, look, you can also look at religion this way, it's a more constructive way of doing it. And being religious does not mean you give up on other values. Mm -hmm. He's also trying to make a point. So I think he'd come into this very much to fight, very much to win. Uh, whether he wins or not is a different question, but I think yeah. he's definitely not the kind of person who would come in just for the show. I think that's a very interesting thought, you know, uh, um, Manu, to close with. Uh, I think there would be widespread sort of, hey, Shashi, go for it, even among those who vote PJP. Uh, and I do think he has a kind of cross-party uh, appeal. I think there's a there's a kind of uh, tapping into an aspirational India that he does uh, very much speak to. And I've seen it in live events that I've moderated with him and, 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 and so on. But, you know, you're a historian. You know that sometimes mutinies and rebellions actually save organizations. I am one of those who's long argued that the Congress needs a mutiny to save it from itself. Do you believe that if this doesn't go, from everything you know about Shashi, I mean, how far is his life committed to staying in politics? Because if he finds a dead end for himself within the Congress party, what's next for Shashi? Yeah, uh, hang on, Manu, you're on mute. Just unmute yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I think for the foreseeable future, he'll continue as MP for Trivandrum, uh, because so far, none of the other parties have found anybody to dislodge him. Uh, so even if, you know, he's a hopeless romantic in one sense, and he's a writer with idealism, he's also capable of winning multiple elections. And that's it. There used to be a saying, right, there was only one MP before who had won three elections, and he's the next person to win that seat that many times. So I think in politics, he'll probably stay on. He'll probably stay on and represent Trivandrum for as long as he can. Uh, in terms of the election, I think he's set a very good precedent because, you know, so many people have assumed that the, this is a given, right? The Gandhis will nominate somebody and that person will win. I think somebody charismatic, somebody with, somebody with an opinion, somebody who sometimes pushes against the party line, if not fully, uh, you know, goes against it. Uh, somebody like that standing up and even giving a fight, no matter how small, I think it opens the door in future for future elections for other people to also follow that path. So in that sense, at the very least, I think it will set a very strong precedent. And that in the longer recovery of the Congress party might be a very useful thing.